Now that we have covered the partitions, we understand how the data is stored on different nodes using partitions. So we can move on to learn the concept of partitioned and replicated cache. This is mainly related to the Ignite caching. So when we create a new Ignite cache, we can configure it to be a partitioned or replicated cache. Let's understand what does this mean. So we'll start with the replicated cache. Suppose we have an Ignite cluster of three nodes. So here we have three Ignite nodes. And here we have the data set. All right. So when we create an Ignite cache, the cache, the data for the cache will be stored in this cluster on different nodes. And when we configure a cache to be replicated, what that means is whatever data we store in the Ignite cache will be replicated on all the nodes in the cluster. So let's say as the first operation goes, let's say we are storing an entry K1 and V1. All right. So let's say the entry will be stored on this particular node. But since the cache is replicated, that means the same data will be replicated to all the nodes. So this node will also have the entry K1V1 and this node will also have the entry K1V1. Later, let's say we added another entry K2V2, maybe on this node. Again, the same data, the same entry will be replicated on all other nodes. So all these nodes will have the same data, hence the name or the mode is called replicated cache. Whatever data we are changing or updating or adding to any node for the Ignite cache will be replicated on all the nodes. So all the nodes will have a consistent view of the data. All the nodes will have the same data. When we use replicated cache, we get super fast reads. The reason behind this is let's say the application wants to fetch some data, some record from the Ignite cache and the request lands on that node. Now in this case, because this node has the data locally, it can return the same data back to the client. It doesn't have to check the other node, let's say, hey, do you have the entry? It doesn't have to do so because it has the entry. And so the request can land on any node to fetch the record and it will be served locally by that Ignite node because all the nodes have the same data set. So we get fast reads when we use replicated cache. The downside is writes become slower. The reason is whenever there is a write operation or an update operation to update the existing data, that operation not only happens on that particular node, but the same update or the same write has to be sent to all other nodes. The data has to be replicated. And so it takes some time. And that's why writes are relatively slower in replicated cache mode. There's one more downside in this approach, which is the amount of data that we can store because all the nodes have to store all the data. The data is replicated. So the amount of data that we can store is limited by the available memory on that node. So for example, here, whatever data we store on a node will have to be sent to all the cluster nodes. All right. So let's say the memory is full on this particular node. What do we do then? Do we lose the data? Or should we add a new node? And what if we add a new node? Would that help the cluster? Because we have to replicate the whole data set. One option could be to scale up the node. That means to assign more memory to store more data. So you see there are pros and cons of this approach. As a benefit, we get the faster reads. But the downside is we get slower writes and the amount of data that we can store in the cluster. Let's move on and understand the second mode, which is partition. We can create an Ignite cache and configure it to be a partition cache. So in this case also, we have the Ignite cluster. Let's say there are three nodes. So this is the Ignite cluster. And here we have the data set that we want to store. Now in this mode, whatever data we store in the Ignite cache will be partitioned. So it will be divided into different partitions and each node would store some of the partitions. So let's say this node got a partition, this node also got a partition and the third node is also storing a partition. And each partition would store some keys. So these are keys basically which are stored on different nodes. Since each node only stores a subset of data, doesn't store the full data, 
that means we can use this storage more efficiently we can store more data on the same storage and if we want to store more data we simply add more nodes by adding new nodes we get more storage capacity we can store more partitions and hence more entries that is the main benefit of partition cache that we can store more data the data is stored in partitions on different nodes and each node stores only a subset of data now unlike replicated cache mode writes are faster in this case because whenever we have a write operation the write operation happens on the node which owns that particular partition and that write doesn't have to propagate to all the cluster nodes so we get faster writes but reads are relatively slower because in order to read a particular entry we need to identify the node which owns that particular partition where that entry is stored so when do we use replicated cache and when do we use partition cache it depends on the use case if your data set is smaller and you want faster writes then we can go with replicated cache because the all the data set will be stored on all the nodes but if the data set is huge storage is also important and we can afford slightly slower reads then we can go with the partition cache mode because in this case we can store more data although because we have to find the right node in order to read a record we will have to afford some slower reads now there is one more related concept which is called backup if you consider in this case the partition is only available on node n1 what if the node goes down then we will lose this partition and so we will lose all the entries which are currently stored in this partition and to avoid this scenario we use the backups we can configure the backup copies so let's say we configured the backup copies to be 2 in that case the ignite will store three copies of the partition first copy will be the primary copy and the backup will be stored on different nodes of the same partition because we configured two backups so two copies will be stored as backups on different nodes and hence three copies in total and similarly all the partitions will be backed up so here this particular partition is triangle so it will be backed up on different nodes and similarly this partition will be also backed up now when we have the primary copy and the backup copies of a partition there are something called primary owner and the secondary owner what is primary owner well here if you notice this particular partition natively exists on node n1 so n1 will be the primary owner of this partition and the secondary owner of the backup copies will be n2 and n3 and similarly n2 is the primary owner of this partition while this particular node n4 and n3 are basically the secondary owners of triangle copy the backup copies basically so each node can be the primary owner of different partitions and simultaneously it can also be the secondary owner of backup partitions other partitions which have different primary owners so in this section we covered the replicated cache mode partition cache mode and how backup works in ignite let's move on